Penn State football continuing to add to the class of 2025 in the after hours portion of the recruiting world. I, I know it goes year round, Ryan Snyder, but typically when we're talking about recruiting and getting the bulk of your class, it happens in June and early July. Here we are much later than that. Uh, and Penn State's still picking up commitments. It's class 26. They got a couple uh, this past weekend and now coming back around to the class of 2025. So welcome to the show. Give fans the good news about who is joining the Nittany Lions. Yeah, defensive lineman Yvonne Kamaju. And I want to pronounce that again for fans so they know it down the road. It is not Yvonne Kamaju. I'll raise my hand. I've been messing that up for many months. It is Yvonne. So the Y is pronounced like an E, Yvonne. And then it's not Kamaju. It's Kem Aju. Pretty much how, it, how it's spelled there. But I guess my uh, my idiot self uh, was butchering that. But anyway, let's get right to the point. Penn State's very happy to get another defensive lineman on board. And this is a guy that has tested for them. This is a guy who's tested at Baltimore. So there is plenty of information about what he can become. Right now we have him about 6'3", 240 on his profile. I think he's a little bit under that size-wise at the moment. I believe he checked in a little bit closer to 230 uh, this past weekend when he was up at Penn State. But it, it look, incredibly well built. Uh, I was I was talking to T. Frank off air about you know how impressed I was with him physically. I, he looked good at Baltimore Under Armour, but he, he really popped more physically from, from that perspective uh, up at Penn State's camp this past weekend. Guy who looks like a DN right now, but what I'll stress is this is his third year playing football. Um, you know, got his feet wet as a sophomore, or excuse me, yeah, got his feet wet as a sophomore, really kind of blossomed as a junior, and now – you know, is really kind of building himself up physically and, and has learned mm -hmm. enough technique wise where we could see a, a big step here uh, his senior year. So obviously he's going to play defensive tackle. I expect him to play defensive tackle at Penn State. Uh, so he's going to need time to put on some more weight, you know, add 20, 30, who knows, 40 more pounds. We'll see. Uh, but Penn State really feels like this is a guy who get you get him in your system. He's still pretty raw from a lot of ways uh, yeah. and he could really blossom. And then you add in the fact that he's an academic kid through and through. Uh, he, he's told me multiple times how important academics were uh, it, throughout this recruitment. Uh, you know, you, you know, you're getting a good kid who, who fits in well uh, for what, you know, Penn State really wants to see from its commitments and and, you know, what fans want to see, um, you know, how those guys carry themselves. So I think Penn State is really excited to get this one over the line. They needed to get another defensive lineman in this class. Time will tell if they're able to flip somebody else. You know, we'll, we'll see is whether it's a D end or a D lineman, but uh, they needed one more positionally from a balance perspective and, and Yvonne mm -hmm. Kemajou looks to be that guy. Can you take us through the timeline? Just because what I out, uh, laid out kind of in the beginning of this was that um, typically when guys take official visits, they make their decision pretty soon after uh, the official visit window because spots are filling up and you want to make your decision. You've seen all of the different angles of that. So um, I want you to ask, answer that question. But a lot of this information over at bluewhiteillustrated.com, sign up right now, two months for $1. You get the promo code PSU1 in there, and you'll get that deal. It's just for our YouTube and podcast audience. We want to get you in on the details so that you can be on the message board and you can be throwing your favorite gifts when Penn State gets a commitment, or you can be throwing your least favorite gifts and your anger gifts when they lose somebody in recruiting. If you're passionate about this stuff, there's one place you need to be the Blue White Illustrated message board with a bunch of people who feel the same way as you, and you can have those emotions all the time, anytime, at your full throat. So, Ryan, um, why the particular timing of this one right now? Well, it's just kind of uh, to give the timeline on how this all played out, uh, Penn State offered him in December. Uh, and like I said, it was – if you look at just how he's grown with football, I mean, sophomore year, he's just trying to learn the sport, really. Junior year's really, really started to blossom and pop. So it makes sense Penn State would offer in December, um, which is what they did. And then he was a consistent visitor uh, a good bit throughout that. Um, of course, took his official visit in June. Uh, also went to a bunch of other really good academic schools. Uh, he told me that his commitment, his recruitment really came down to Vatek and Rutgers, though. Those seemed to be the schools he was most interested in the end. And I, and I think it was really all about, like I said, that combination of academics uh, and Penn State obviously having really good football that that got this over the line. But uh, he visited. Uh, let me clarify. He visited in. Uh, actually, he only visited once. I'm actually surprised. I thought he had. I thought he was here in the spring. Maybe I'm missing him a visit on his uh, profile. But right now I have January 20th, and then his official visit on May 5th or May 31st is the only two visits he took. I swear he came one other time, but I'll figure that out off air. But uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, just just a guy. It's kind of in Penn State's backyard. You know, they, they have good ties in, in that uh, in that region. So they're able to do some digging. And and man, it just everything off the field makes a lot of sense uh, for him to fit in well here at Penn State. And, you know, mm -hmm. you, you can get a guy that off the field does all the right things. 
and then let them blossom uh, on the field and it has plenty of potential for that. You know, that's that's how you get some really good combinations. So let's let's see where things progress with that long term. He's a guy that uh, right now, as we showed you three star rating, but the underlying things here are really impressive, Ryan. And I haven't done much digging here to see kind of where the, the warts are, but the highlight tape, when you put some of this into context, is, is just a little bit eye-popping. Because you mentioned the way he moves is like a defensive end, or the way he looks, the way he moves is like a defensive end. The length, the size, the athleticism, his movement skills. I'm very excited about his tools. The tools level stuff is on par with some of the guys they got in the class of 2024 from athleticism and length. I mean, holy cow, there's some things in here that uh, he's a complete defensive tackle from frame size outside of a 6'3". He's not the 6'5". Beyond that, the growth potential here and the length and the frame all scream um, Keziah Izzard level ability to grow as a guy who was thick, maybe that's not, I've been f trying to find a pot, like a, a more accurate comparison of a guy. Cause it's not cause I is there, cause I is was a bigger guy in high school at DeMatha where he was clearly a defensive tackle from a body type standpoint. This is a guy who could be six, three, 290 pounds of chiseled muscle. And, mm -hmm. and just the, his, his growth potential and his movement skills right now are really really unique so i think from just a baseline of this is a three-star who could well outperform that from a traits perspective um do you have any other interesting uh nuggets of of, of that stuff you want to add in any other details and context of how pensa feels about him in in that light um not a ton honestly uh i think i i don't have a great comparison and that's a good point um you know we, we've we've talked Xavier Xavier Gillum before because of you know both seeing him at Under Armour and both of them working out as DNs knowing that if they come to Penn State they beat the, the tackles but Xavier already had quite a bit of weight on him um, compared yeah. to where uh, Yvonne's at right now so I have to I have to do a little digging on that to kind of give an accurate comparison uh, but you know what I what I will come back to is just kind of what we've stressed already which is that they have accurate numbers from multiple camps and they feel mm -hmm. really good about okay this is a guy who's only played a couple of years of football. Boy, there's some athletics. There's some athletic uh, data here that suggests, boy, man, you give him another year or two up. here, it could it could really take off. And I think that's that's kind of the mindset here is of, of why you gotta you gotta go all in on a guy like Yvonne Kemaju. So we will see where where things progress with him long term. But man, awesome kid, really really bright individual. Um, mm -hmm. If he doesn't go to the NFL, I'm telling you, there's a good chance he's going to be a doctor or something because he is <laughs> probably already uh, on a higher IQ level than me. So I'll give him a lot of credit for that. And and he's a guy, I think the the term typical Penn State defensive tackle recruit, some people see that as a negative because they see guys that are a little bit smaller for the position who have uh, quickness traits, but maybe aren't the elite size guys. I'm just, I just want to say like, I think Penn State recruits a really good style of defensive tackle. And I think he's a typical Penn State defensive tackle recruit because he moves so well and has the development curve that I outlined earlier. And whether or not he fits on uh, the size spectrum of some of these other guys we've mentioned, he can be a complete three de three technique defensive tackle from what I see of his abilities. Uh, he just needs to add the weight and the experience, but the athleticism and the movement skills, all of those things are, are super positive. So. Uh, we'll watch that development together and we'll break that down in T Frank's film room. If we can find some full game footage. And of course, as his, uh, his, his time at Penn state progresses to whenever he gets on the field, if he gets able to get there, that's all coming up in the future. But right now, what you got to do is like the video, subscribe here to the blue white illustrated YouTube channel. And of course, follow Ryan Snyder on Twitter and at blue white illustrated.com. So you can get all of the facts and the information uh, to come. Ryan, thank you so much for your time. We'll be back with the next Penn State football commit when it happens here on the Blue White Illustrated YouTube channel.